Pacific shore, you'll find the city of Romo. Managua, Nicaragua is a beautiful town. You buy an hacienda for a few pesos down. Central America until recently has been in shadow, largely ignored by scholars and journalists, so that the epic struggles of its peoples and the names of their heroes were lost behind a facade of ridicule, the so-called banana republics. In 1823, President Monroe proclaimed what was modestly called the Monroe Doctrine. Its aim was to protect Latin America from the Europeans, regardless of whether the people of Latin America wanted to be protected. This paternalism later became known as America's manifest destiny, that is, America's God-given right to control its own hemisphere. Early in the 20th century, manifest destiny took on a new meaning. It was now a crusade against Bolshevism, an imagined red threat in America's backyard. In 1912, US Marines landed in Nicaragua to protect democracy, as they put it, and to hold elections. But people in Nicaragua didn't want a foreign army to organize their elections, and resistance began behind a leader who said, the issue is that the United States has no right to invade and humiliate a small country. His name was Augusto Sandino. He was a liberal and a nationalist, not a Marxist. And the Americans made the mistake of dismissing him as a bandit. Central America, said U.S. Under Secretary of State Richard Olds, has always understood that governments which we recognize and support stay in power, while those we do not recognize and support fail. Major General Smedley Butler of the United States Marines later described his role with disarming frankness. I was a racketeer for capitalism, he said. I helped purify Nicaragua for international banking. I brought light to the Dominican Republic for American sugar interests. And I helped make Honduras right for American fruit companies. Sandino and what was called his mad little army rejected all that. On July the 16th, 1927, he attacked the U.S. Marines headquarters here at Ocotal in the north of Nicaragua. And that afternoon, across these hills, came a formation of de Havilland biplanes bearing United States markings. The planes formed into a column and dived at the center of town. With machine guns blazing, they dropped their bombs at 300 feet. And that is now believed to be the first use of organized dive bombing in history, long before the German Luftwaffe was credited with the innovation at Guernica in Spain. There were hundreds of casualties, and Sandino learned a lesson. From then on, he became a master of guerrilla warfare, of attacking and melting away, tactics which were to be adopted around the world and to change much of the world over the next 50 years. By 1933, Sandino's mad little army had defeated the Marines, driving them from Nicaragua, a lesson of history apparently overlooked today. Sandino went to Managua for peace talks, where he was betrayed by America's man, Somoza, the head of the National Guard. In 1934, he was murdered. There was a calypso sung in American nightclubs in the 1940s that began like this. A guy asked the dictator if he had any farms. The dictator said he had only one. It was Nicaragua. Anastasio Somoza founded a dynasty that ran Nicaragua like a family business for 44 years. The Somosas owned almost half of all the arable land in Nicaragua. They controlled the coffee, sugar and beef industries. Nothing was overlooked. They owned the national airline outright. If you bought a Mercedes car, you bought it from a Somosa company. Even the paving stones in the streets were made by a Somosa cement factory, which got the contract from a Somosa ministry. And of course, the profits went to El Presidente. The Somosas were protected by a private army called the National Guard, which the United States created, paid, and armed. Somosa called them his boys, and they tortured almost as a sport. This is the Messiah Volcano, which, as you can see, is very much alive. One of the delights of Somosa's boys was to drop his opponents from helicopters into the volcano. The official American attitude to Somoza was best summed up by President Roosevelt. That guy, he said, may be a son of a bitch, but he's our son of a bitch.
The first Somosa began his career as a sewerage inspector and went on to own the sewers of Nicaragua, right up to the manhole covers. This is the remains of another Somosa interest after the Sandinistas had got through with it, a notorious blood factory known as the House of Dracula, to which poor Nicaraguans would sell their blood for as little as a dollar a litre in order to buy food. The blood would then be sold to the United States for ten times that amount. The year was 1978, one year before the uprising. This was Somoza's National Guard, or Death Squad. 1898, President McKinley orders U.S. troops to invade Cuba. 1905, President Theodore Roosevelt orders the invasion of Honduras. 1912, President Taft orders the invasion of Nicaragua. 1914-18, to 18, President Wilson invades Haiti, Cuba, and Panama. 1924 to 26, President Coolidge invades Nicaragua and Honduras. 1954, Eisenhower approves the overthrow of the elected government of Guatemala. 1961, Kennedy approves a CIA invasion of Cuba. 1965, Johnson invades the Dominican Republic. 1973, Nixon approves the overthrow of the elected government of Chile. 1981, President Reagan approves the CIA secret war against Nicaragua. 1983, President Reagan orders the invasion of Grenada. Their legacy is this remarkable United States military encirclement of the region, a vast ring of Americans on land, sea, and in the air, allowing a rapid deployment force to cover any eventuality, Grenada being the latest example.